everyone, and welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and age better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. Back in the day when I was working as a magazine publisher and giving a lot of presentations and speeches, a very wise mentor told me something that I've never forgotten. Your audience will never remember everything you tell them. No way. It's like not happening. But they will remember moments. I mean, that's true of every form of content we listen to or read or watch, even this podcast, right? You can't be expected to remember all the details shared with you. And so every once in a while, I like to have a bit of a review of the top moments and talk through those that have found a special place in my own age better toolbox, as I like to call it. So in this episode, I'm going to share three key takeaways with you because they are three things that I learned from hosting this show from some incredible guests, and they are helping me to age better, and I think they will help you to age better too. And now that it's officially spring, yay, you can use these takeaways as part of your spring time tune-up. But first, I want to thank you all for joining in each week and for reaching out to me by email or social media with your comments and ideas for future episodes. Please keep your ideas coming. Send them to grufftalkpodcast at gmail.com or connect with me on social media. I hope you all had the time to listen to last week's episode where my guest was Dr. Margaret Noctegal, a frequent visitor to Gruff Talk and also the medical director of Menopause Cheat Sheet, a newsletter we published together. The episode was actually in response to a few listeners who wanted to know more about a very common drug, metformin. So after this episode, take a listen to that one too, or watch the episode on YouTube. Next week, my guest will be a journalist who recently wrote an article that is gaining a lot of attention. It's about why people over 50 should say yes to sex without hesitation. And she also shares her own personal story. And a little update on my running, which is a huge part of my life and has been for over 16 years. I'm not running at the moment because I did something that only a newbie runner would have done. I made a very bad choice that turned into a big, bad deal. About a month ago on a brutally cold day in New York City, I was at the start line of a 10K race in Central Park. It was actually the Manhattan 10K race, to be specific feeling very cold, but you know, pretty good, pretty ready for the race. However, and here's where the error in judgment comes in, I had not warmed up at all, like not at all. I barely even walked to the start because it was so cold. I took an Uber and then it was just like a little, you know, walk from there to there to the start. So I really was not warmed up at all. So we start running and I'm feeling pretty darn good. And then within five minutes of running, we get to the famous or infamous, <laughs> probably, Cat Hill. And instead of slowing down and maybe even walking up the hill, which is probably what I should have done, what did I do instead? I sprinted. Yep, I sprinted. I didn't run. I didn't jog. No, I sprinted. And then I felt it. I felt a pop followed by a staggering jolt of pain in my right butt. Excuse me, everyone. Yeah, it was my right butt. It was impossible for me to continue and I could barely even walk. Had to pull out of the race. Yep, I had to pull out. I was heartbroken. I love medals so much. <sighs> Diagnosis, well, after an exam and an x-ray, and then finally, weeks later, due to no improvement, I had an MRI, which showed a pretty big tear in my right hamstring, not a pull, but a tear. But there's good news here. Tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, I will be getting a PRP injection, which will help my body to re repair itself. That's what a PRP injection does. And it's really incredible. I've had one before. It's an incredible thing that really helps with a lot of different issues, especially muscle tears. PRP stands for platelet rich plasma. And the way it's done is they take blood from your arm put it into a centrifuge right there in the office, mix it for, I don't know, I, can't, I think it was like 15, 20 minutes to extract the platelet-rich plasma. And that is what gets injected into the muscle with the tear. I actually don't want to think about it too much anymore right now because even though I know it works, 
just thinking about it is kind of freaking me out. So we will move on now. Okay, let's move on, shall we? But before we do, I just want to say that not enough people know about PRP. So I am probably going to do an episode focusing on this with some terrific expert that I, I have in mind. So no running from me for at least six to eight weeks, depending upon how I'm doing. So I am doing other things so I don't lose my fitness altogether. I'm going to try rowing, biking, and absolutely keeping up with my strength training. And I'm really into using bands for resistance training. I don't know if you all are doing that. I highly recommend it. And I have like a little routine I've created for myself. And I should probably do a video to show everyone what I do so that you can all do it too. Because not just for runners, just for overall strength training. And then hopefully in May, I will start training for the drum roll, please. New York City Marathon, which will be on November 5th. Yep, I am doing it again. Yep, and I'm also team captain of the Bone Health and Osteoporosis Foundation Be Bone Strong team. We have a great team this year. I'm so excited. And I'm also running for the very very first time for me, the Chicago Marathon, and that's on October 8th. So I'm super duper excited about both of these, and I will do everything I'm supposed to do and nothing I'm not supposed to do to make sure that my hamstring tear heals by May. So that's my goal. And um, it's going to be really fun for me to kind of try these other ways, especially cardio ways to you know maintain and maybe even increase my fitness without running. It's going to be a challenge because I'm very used to I me. Mean, running is a habit for me now, but I will do my best and I will kind of share with you my progress. So, okay. So stick around because in a few moments, I am going to share three things that I think will help you to age better because they're definitely helping me and uh, will be a part of your spring tune-up. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's get to those three key takeaways I learned from guests who appeared on the show during this last year that have really resonated with me and have helped me to age better and which I encourage you to embrace as part of your personal kickstart to spring, which is all about renewal, right? So, you know, new things, try new things. All right, number one is from episode number two, which aired in May of 2022. So it's been a while and which featured the co-authors of The Whole Body Reset, which is a New York Times bestselling book about how to age better by embracing a few small changes such as, and this is the thing I want you to focus on, when you eat protein, when you eat protein. It's not talking about like eating more protein because basically Americans get enough protein, but it's when you eat the protein. The research behind the book, according to Heidi Skolnick and Steve Perrine, who were the co-authors of the book, and they were the guests on the show, was very specific to people 50 and over. So the information is really relevant to us, right? What they want you to remember is that in order to keep your muscles strong so you don't get frail or weak, which can increase your risk of falling and possibly fracturing a bone, you know, I'm really big on that, big on bone health, is this. Eat at least 30 grams of protein at each meal, and especially, this is key, especially at breakfast. Otherwise, you are running all day on a protein deficit, which will accelerate your muscle loss. You got that? Eat protein at breakfast every day and at every meal. Well, what's a good protein breakfast? Well, a fruit and yogurt smoothie with some whey protein, that, that's W-H-E-Y, whey protein mixed in eggs, cottage cheese. The best thing to do is to listen to episode two so you can hear the entire conversation and think about picking up a copy of their book, The Whole Body Reset. So remember, eat protein at breakfast. All right, here's number two. This shareable moment is from episode 13, which focused on how to master your microbiome to age better. It was a fascinating conversation I had with a scientist with a lab in Washington State whose sole focus is on the microbiome and ways that it can impact our health span and also extend our lifespan. It was a detailed conversation with a lot of science in it, so I encourage you to find it and listen to it. You'll learn so much about your microbiome. 
which is often referred to as the second brain. But probably the most actionable tip from that episode is this, eat more fiber. Get it into everything you eat and eat it throughout the day. A great way to add some fiber into your food, like I do, is to mix ground flax seeds, which you can get easily from any store, into your food. I put it in cottage cheese, yogurt, smoothies, pancake and waffle mixes, really just about anything. It doesn't really have much of a taste. And in fact, it kind of adds a nice little earthiness to foods. Just be careful how much you start eating if this is all kind of new to you so you don't have like a gastro reaction, right? You may need to build up to the right daily amount. So to repeat, eat more fiber and check out episode 13 about the microbiome so you can hear all the details if you haven't heard it already. All right, so number three was tough because I had to choose between really so many great tips from so many great guests, but I've decided to go with this one. Breathe through your nose. I know it sounds simple. It sounds like Barbara, duh. But this episode, which featured Patrick McEwen and was called How to Breathe Right to Age Better, aired not that long ago, not that long ago, not as old as the other two. And it's episode 40, in fact. During our conversation, Patrick explained that many people don't realize they are breathing through their mouths or breathing too quickly or too deeply. He shared a lot of science-backed info on how breathing right can improve a lot of health issues such as anxiety and sleep disorders and even some other real physical issues like even chronic pain. So here's the takeaway with number three, breathe low, meaning through your belly, not your upper chest. Breathe gently by exhaling for longer than you inhale. So let's say you kind of inhale at the count of four, exhale at the count of six or seven. And don't breathe in so deeply. He believes also in something called like a breath hunger Breathing deeply, he thinks, is misplaced. Like I said, you may want to listen to that episode again. So he also even advocates for taping your, your mouth closed during sleep because he says you, you want to breathe through your nose, never your mouth, even when you're working out. Like I've even tried this one running when I, back when I could run. <laughs> and I would breathe through my nose. I mean, sometimes I'd have to slow down my pace, of course, but It's just, he said, it makes a big, big, big difference, truly makes a difference, especially when sleeping. So like I said, he even advocates for taping your mouth closed during sleep to keep it from opening as this could help with very common things like sleep apnea and snoring. So if you have a partner who snores, you you may want to get out the tape. Actually, Patrick makes a special tape, which we talked about during the episode And if you watch the episode on YouTube, you can even see him holding up and placing the tape on his mouth. So you may want to check that out. Okay, so this wraps up our three key takeaways to help you kickstart your spring tune-up and to help you to age better. I hope you enjoyed this. I think I'll do a few more of them. They're kind of quick bites of, I think, useful information that you can implement right now. All of these things you can start doing today. So let me know what else you want to talk about by sending an email to groftalkpodcast at gmail.com or connecting with me on social media. All right, everyone. Talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Groft Talk, please do two things. First, share it with all your friends and family and subscribe to Groft Talk wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Until next time, remember this, we can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice, women's voices amplified.